Hey everyone, welcome back to another tip of the week. For this week's video, I want to show you how you can create an HDR cityscape and then quickly mask out the sky using Amon Photo Raw 2018. So to get started creating your HDR cityscape, you're first going to want to have different exposure brackets. So if I look in here and browse and I scroll through my exposures here, I have a darker exposure where I've exposed for the highlights. I have another exposure where I've exposed for the shadow tones. And then I sort of have the middle exposure where it kind of exposes for everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my grid view here. I'm just going to select those photos. And I'm just going to head over to HDR. So you'll notice now that we're in HDR, we have a nicely merged exposure for our cityscape. So there's not a whole lot I want to do inside of the HDR dialog. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to head down to my exposures down here. And I'm going to select this icon here so that it uses this as my base exposure. You'll notice that once I click that, it sort of darkened the image. Well, it's using the darker exposure as my base exposure. So it's sort of giving it a darker look. No fear, I can head over to my tone and color here and I can just up the shadows a little bit and bring back some of the shadow detail into my city. I can also pull back on the exposure a tad, boost my midtones a little bit, and then I'll up the contrast, and then I'll pull back on my blacks. So there we go. We have sort of a basic tonality set for our shot, and now we can head into HDR look and I usually just stick with natural, but for this one, I'm going to add a little bit more compression just so it gives it more of a refined HDR look. And now I'm just going to make sure that I have this set to open inside of develop so we can get to editing right away. And just remember that these settings here in tone and color and HDR look are automatically going to be saved and you can re-edit them at any time. I wouldn't worry too much about getting them perfect inside of the HDR dialog because you can always go back inside of develop and effects and re-edit those. So I'll just hit save here and it automatically sent me into develop. So now we can start editing our HDR cityscape. So the first thing I want to do to this shot is I actually want to crop it. I took this with a pretty wide angle lens and I had a polarizer on it so you can see kind of the edges of that in the corner of the frame. So all I can do is just head up to the crop tool here and I'm actually going to go up to this menu and I'm going to select the 16 by 9 preset. And then I'm just going to pull it in a little bit. And then I can drag it around until I get a nice crop. And I'm just trying to get the crop lines just outside of this building here and just outside of this tower on the bridge. So if we pull it in a little further here, maybe about right there. And now I can just pull up on it a little bit to use the rule of thirds line here. I'll head up to my level tool, grab the leveling tool by clicking this icon here. And now I can just drag across a straight line and it'll level my photo for me. So now I have a nicely cropped image. I can just hit enter and then my photos crop for me right away. So the last thing I want to do instead of develop is I'm just going to head over to my tone and color here and I'm just going to heat the photo up just a little bit just so that it brings back some of those warm colors from the sunset here and it gets it on top of our scene. So now that we have this nicely merged together HDR cityscape, what I want to do is I want to replace the sky up here. You'll notice that it's a little bland, there's a little bit going on with these clouds here, but there's also a bunch of dust spots in here. We don't even have to worry about retouching any of these because we're just going to replace the sky anyway. So if we want to replace the sky, we just need to head into layers here. So now we're in layers, and this is where we're going to replace our sky. So first things first, we need a sky to replace this sky with. So we'll head into our extras over here. And in On One Extras, these are all of the extras that come readily available with On One Photo Raw 2018 as soon as you download it. If you do want to add your own textures and skies and backgrounds into On One Photo Raw, head up to File, and then Manage Extras. And this is where you can add in any of your own content. So I'll just close that here, and I'm just going to head into On One Extras, and Backgrounds, and Skies, and I'll scroll down to the one I want. I know it's this one here. I'll just double click it. I'll add it as a layer, and I'll add that sky layer onto my shot. So now that we have our sky layer on top of our original photo, 
The first thing I like to do is I head over to my layer opacity and I just like to pull it down to about 50. And I like to do this so that I can see kind of what the sky is already going to look like on top of my shot. And right away, the first thing I notice is that if I turn this off, the sun on our original photo is coming from over here, whereas if I turn this guy on, the sun's on the right side. So what we can do is I can head up to my transform tools here, and I'll just go over to flip horizontal, click it, and now we have the sun on the left side, and it aligns better with our original shot. Now that we have our sky layer added, we don't really need this extras pane. So a quick tip, if you want to remove it, just head down to this icon here and you can show or hide your extras pane. So now that we have this big screen, the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to put our sky layer behind our composite layer. But first, we want to align our sky layer with our cityscape. So we can actually just grab it and drag it around until we get a nice area that we like. Probably about right there. So now we can head to our layer opacity over here and crank it back to 100. And then what I'll do is I'll just drop this top layer below my composite layer so that I have our main photo on top. And the reason I want to have my main layer on top is so that I can brush out this area on my main photo to reveal our new sky layer from underneath. So to do that, I'm just gonna head over to my masking brush here I'm going to make sure that my feathering is at 100 and my opacity is at 100 and also that I have my perfect brush toggled on. Now I can just simply brush out and remove that sky layer from my original photo. So now we have a basic sky replacement on our shot. It's looking a little janky down here, kind of by our buildings. There's a little bit of glow from our original sky, and we want to blend it a little bit better. So let's go up to our brushing controls, and we'll turn off perfect brush, and we'll lower our opacity to about, I don't know, 25 to 30. And we'll set it to paint in. And now we can just sort of brush on our original sky back in and it'll blend a lot better with our new sky. So there we go. That looks a lot better than before, and you can't even really tell around the buildings where the new sky ends and the old sky is. So now that we have our sky replaced, we can head down to save. And if I head back into browse, and I'll save and close this, I have my sky replacement photo right there. So now that we've replaced the sky, what we can do now is we can get creative and start adding filters to it. So I'll head into effects. And the first thing I want to do to my photo is I actually just want to darken this area on the bottom. So I'm going to head into local adjustments, I'm going to grab a darken local adjustment layer, I'm going to use my local adjustment gradient, I'm just going to drop it down on the bottom here, flip it around. And I'm actually going to make the feathering pretty tight. And then I'm just going to drag it up kind of right by where that boat's at here. And that does a great job of sort of subduing that area on the water. It's a little intense, so what I can do is just pull back on the opacity a little bit so that it's not so dark. And the next local adjustment layer I want to add is I want to deal with these buildings in here. I want to brighten them up a little bit and add a little bit of detail. So I'm going to head over and add a new local adjustment layer, and I'm going to make sure it's set to the detail preset. And then I'm going to up the exposure just a little bit, a few stops. And then I'm going to up the shadows a little. And I'm actually going to bring in a little bit of warmer temperature. And then I'm going to up the structure just a little bit more. And now what I can do is I'm going to head over to my adjustment brush here. And now I can simply just brush on this local adjustment layer onto my cityscape.
And I know that's looking pretty intense, so we can head over to our opacity slider here. And I like to just pull it down all the way. And then I can just kind of incrementally pull it up to get the look I want. I'd say about right there looks pretty good. So if I turn that local adjustment layer on and off, it does a pretty good job of bringing out those darker areas within my cityscape. Now that we've added a couple local adjustment layers to sort of deal with some darker and brighter areas in the shot, now what we can do is we can head into overall settings instead of effects, and we can add different creative filters to our shot. The first filter I want to add, I want to deal with the harshness in these clouds up here. I want to make them a little bit softer. So what I can do is I'll add a filter and I'll add the glow filter. And I'll head down to my presets here and I'll use charge more subtle. And you'll see right away that it sort of softens up our sky area here, but it does the same thing with our cityscape, which we want to be pretty detailed. So I'll just head over to my masking bug here and I'll drop it above the city line and I'll flip it around and then I'll pull it up so that our cityscape is nice and sharp but our sky is a little bit softer. So now if I turn this glow on and off it does a great job of sort of softening up the sky and also adding a little bit of color and vibrance to it. So at this point, let's hit the backslash key on our keyboard. And you'll see that we've added a lot to the city area in here and sort of softened up our sky with a nice glow. So the next filter I want to add onto my shot is I want to add a filter that kind of adds a little bit more detail into my buildings here. So I'm just going to add dynamic contrast. And I'm actually going to use the preset style texture enhancer. And you'll notice that if I turn this on and off, it really adds a nice little bit of detail into my buildings here, but it's being applied to the entire shot. So we'll go into our masking options, we'll invert the mask so that it's not being applied to any of our photo, and now we can just simply brush in that detail as we please. So there we go, if we turn that on and off, you'll see that brings in a lot of nice detail into our skyline. And the last filter I want to add onto this shot is I'm going to add the sunshine filter. And the sunshine filter is great for kind of just bringing in a little bit of pop onto your shot. So you'll see if I turn this on and off, it sort of helps our photo come to life. So if I hit the backslash key on our keyboard to see all of our adjustments, you'll see we really elevated this photo using On One Photo Raw 2018. Thank you so much for watching Tip of the Week. I'm Dylan with On One, and stay tuned for more.